Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Laura Walker. I'm the president of Bennington College, and I am just so delighted to welcome you here today. It is an absolutely stunning day in Vermont. It, it just couldn't be more beautiful. The skies are blue. It's sunny. There's kind of even like a hint of crispness to the air. Uh, and the apples are growing on the trees around campus. You know, we pick them and we eat them and uh, they're ready for you when you come. So in a few weeks, you, know, you all will be arriving on campus. You'll be driving up that long winding road like I did two years ago when I was a newbie. Um, when you get to the top of the road, I hope you will do what I did. Take a deep breath, look around, and feel the combination of calm and the excitement also that is Bennington. Um, this is your new home, and we will be waiting there to welcome you. We will be see, you will see um, the new barn. There's a new wing of the barn. Some of you saw the barn uh, wing when it was uh, under construction. It's open, it's beautiful. There's beautiful welcoming spaces there and new classrooms. You'll see Commons, the also newly renovated hub of the campus with dining uh, services and the bookstore and classrooms and just a huge gathering space. You know, I, I had um, dinner with some students over at the Brick House, which is the president's house, uh, a few weeks ago. And I was really struck by, these were a maybe 10, 15 um, current students and a few recent graduates. And uh, over and over, I heard a few themes um, that they love Bennington because they are in charge of their own education. And that those were the words they used, in charge of their own education. They loved it because there are close intellectual and creative relationships with faculty, unlike they said any of their friends have at other schools. And so Bennington is a special place like that. Um, and we, um, we turned 90 this year. Some things have changed about the school uh, for sure in those 90, 90 uh, years. It's a much more diverse uh, uh, student body. Uh, it is more global. Um, it's also remarkably true to its founding values. It's the first school to, to place arts at the center of the curriculum. We empower our students to take charge of their own education and faculty to teach what animates them. Um, students here aren't checking the boxes. So we're so, so looking forward to having you. Here at Bennington, we explore questions with creativity. We cultivate rigorous inquiry and aesthetic intelligence. And we work toward a world that is more beautiful, democratic, sustainable, and just. You are the second largest entering class in the history of Bennington. From 38 states and 24 countries, you're selected from a record pool of applicants. We had 66% more applicants this year for your class than we did the year before. It's not just that more students are choosing Bennington. Um, it, it's also extremely talented faculty, too. Uh, and so... Uh, I want to just, before passing it off to uh, my colleagues here, I just want to also um, end with a thought that uh, as you're coming here, I know you're excited, I know you're nervous, um, you will make friends here, you will find your place. Uh, and also it's really important for you and for all of us to uh, take care of ourselves. And so I also ask as you do this to uh, keep Audrey Lord's um, uh words in mind that caring for myself is not self-indulgence, it is self-preservation. And that is an act of, uh, that is a political statement. And so I hope that you will be kind to yourselves and, and, uh, and be part of our kind and inclusive uh, community. So today I want to meet, I want you to meet some of our incredible staff and I uh, want to uh, thank everyone here uh, on the Bennington staff. They've been amazing and worked so hard to get everyone ready for what I think is going to be a successful and exciting term. Um, we will go through three major areas today, student life, um, and then academics, and then uh, uh, our uh, diversity, equity, inclusion work. And I'm joined today by Lee Chen Chen, who's the Dean of Student Life, and her team, Maurice Hall, our Provost, and his team, and Alfredo Medina, who is our College Diversity Officer, as well as Shelton Walker, who's the Chief of Staff. Uh, Shelton will now tell you uh, a little bit more about what's going to go on, how you can ask questions, how you can participate in this, uh, in this meeting today. Thanks so much. Thank you, President Walker, and welcome to everyone joining us this morning. Thank you for being here. I just want to begin with a few reminders. 
First, closed captioning is available to those who would like it. Um, please just use the option at the bottom of your screen there. And also a reminder that this meeting is being recorded and it will be made available after the session has concluded. We're gonna ask that today you hold your questions until the end, but we will be using the Q&A feature, which is on the right-hand side of your screen. So if you do have questions, you're welcome to drop them there and we'll endeavor to answer all the questions today. Um, but in the event that we don't have enough time, we will follow up with individuals after the session. But again, please hold your questions until the end because some of my colleagues may answer your questions as we move through today's uh, program. And finally, I'd also like to ask my colleague Christina to drop in the chat a number of links that we feel may be helpful to you. Um, they may actually answer some of your questions that you have in advance. So please look for those in the chat as resources. There's the welcome page, which provides a number of resources for orientation and the start of school, as well as a link to a memo that was just sent this morning um, that relays our COVID policies for the fall semester. And finally, a general COVID FAQ that you can refer back to throughout the school year. So without further ado, I'd like to invite my colleague, Lee Chen Chen, Dean of Student Life at Bennington College to the stage, Lee Chen. Thank you, Sheldon, and welcome, everybody. I'm so excited to be here with you today. I'm Li Chen Chen, Dean of Student Life. I joined Bennington College last October, and many of you have received email from me over the summer. Uh, again, a warm welcome, and I'm so glad you can join us today virtually. So let's now let's see where you are logging in from. So if you can type in your location, using the chat box on the right of your screen. Just see where people are logging in from and joining us today. We have people from Vermont, New York City, Mozambique, wonderful, Nevada, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. Wow, you can see the diversity just right here in this virtual space. So once again, a warm welcome. So Student Life facilitates and supports your co-curricular experiences. We work very closely with faculty and academic services to make sure that you have a sense of community and are successful at Bennington. I'm very pleased that this afternoon I have three of my colleagues with me today to share some important information about your arrival. Dr. Kathy Antofer Filon, our Director of Campus Safety, she will provide information about how her team supports the student learning and living experience. Donnie Red, our Director of Res Life and Community Center, he will go over the moving process as well as the arrival process. And last but not least, Dr. Ali Tartaglia, our new Assistant Dean and Director of Student Wellness, will discuss our COVID as well as other infectious disease mitigation strategies. Again, we can wait to meet you in person at the new student orientation on September 1. Without further ado, Kathy. Thank you so much, Lee Chen. I appreciate the introduction. So I am the Director of Campus Safety. And just to let you know that Campus Safety is the team that is here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year to help partner with you to create a safe living and learning environment really for everyone on campus, guests, our staff, our faculty, anyone that wants to visit our campus or is here in their role. Please know that we are also the ones where if you are going to bring a car to campus, we are the place that you register that car and help explain where you can park that car appropriately on campus. When you first arrive and you are going through the resource fair, I'll be there at a table and be able to assist you if you're bringing in a car, how to register that vehicle right then and there with us, as well as answer any other questions that you might have about campus safety. Um, we are always available, as I said, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we have a dispatcher that actually is at a phone that you can call. We also have a team of officers that make regular rounds on campus and they're really there as a resource to support you in being safe and healthy on campus. And I would like to uh, take a moment and pass off 
uh, to my colleague, Director of Residence Life, Donnie Red. Hi, everyone. So I'm Donnie Red, and thank you uh, for introducing me, Kathy. I use he, him pronouns. I'm the Director of Residence Life and Community Standards here at Bennington College. So I am one of the new staff members here um, that started July 1. I'm very excited to be here and uh, see and speak with all of you. So part of what um, my role here is to uh, help provide a safe and inclusive uh, community environment to our uh, student population here, as well as work with the house chairs that'll be in the majority of the houses here um, so that we can provide support and resources for you uh, as you need. And so very excited, looking forward to the year starting. And just to give you a little bit of insight on the uh, arrival and move-in process. So as you know, it's going to be Thursday, September 1. And so from 9 to noon, uh, you'll have uh, the check-in and resource fair, and this will be located at our student center. So we will have um, individuals as well as signs that um, point out the directions to where the student center is and the location of it. And in terms of parking, um, there'll be directions to go to what's called our Ohio lot. Um, and then also you can reach out to uh, Dr. Antha Perfilon um, from Campus Safety if there are any mobility issues or concerns um, to get options for um, parking and starting the move-in process. So when you arrive, you'll be able to pick up your orientation materials like your room key, um, your ID card, and then there'll also be representatives from academic services, business office, campus safety, career development and field work term, um, counseling and psychological services or CAPS, information technology, the library, the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, um, and our registrar, student health, student wellness. So there will be pretty much everybody that will be there at this resource fair uh, to provide you with all the information that you need and answer any questions that you may have, as well as um, help ensure that your moving process goes as seamlessly as possible. Um, and then just to also let you know from 9 a.m. to 10.30, uh, we'll have those that family name starts from A to L, uh, start the moving process. And from 10.30 to 12 noon, those with family names going through M through Z will start their moving process as well. So um, again, very excited to uh, see you all here and hope you um, enjoy that time. And without further ado, I will pass it along to Dr. Ali Tartaglia, our Assistant Dean and Director of Wellness at Bennington College. Thank you so much, Johnny. Welcome, everyone. I'm thrilled to be chatting with you today. Um, I'm just going to quickly go over some of the information that you should have received very shortly before our webinar started today. Uh, regarding arrival related to um, our fall COVID policies. Uh, our arrival policies related to COVID are um, testing. We're asking all of our students uh, and employees who've been off campus uh, to test 72 hours prior to arrival. We're asking those tests to be PCR tests or, or rapid antigen tests. Uh, rapid antigen tests, you're going to do two within those that 72-hour period, the second being as close to when you arrive to campus uh, as possible. Um, our plan uh, at the moment is to be as reflexive as we can to what the prevalence in our state and community is related to COVID. At the moment, Vermont is low, so we are starting fall mask friendly. Um, we are asking people to bring masks to campus with them. Uh, so that should we need to go to a masking on campus or inside model that you have your masks with you. Um, 
we will have a test uh, testing for those who feel symptomatic model. Tests will be provided free uh, through our health and our health uh, center. Um, and students who test positive, we are going to ask to isolate in place uh, in their room. Um, and what we'll do is we will ask the well roommates to move. That allows us a lot more flexibility with space and um, you know nobody likes to move around when they're not feeling well. Um, we also realize that there's lots going on right now in the news with um, monkeypox um, and other infections. I just read an article today about the flu popping up places. Uh, all of this to say that we have really good relationships um, with the state and local health department. We are poised to be um, reflexive and responsive to whatever the needs of our student population is. Um, we are communicating with the state and local health departments to be ready to shift and change to uh, what comes our way. With that, I'm going to pass this off to our provost, Dr. Maurice Hall. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome from what seems to be around the world. It's quite extraordinary to be able to say that. My name is Maurice Hall. I'm the provost at Bennington College. And let me just say, there is no reason why you should know what a provost does or who a provost is. But if I do my job well, you will have an extraordinary educational experience at Bennington College. I'm joined on the screen by two extraordinary colleagues. Noel Murphy, who is the Associate Dean of the College at Bennington College, and Dr. Barbara Alfano, who is the Director of the First Year Forum, and you will hear from them in just a quick second. In saying welcome to you, I want to say welcome not just to a college, but to an extraordinary experience. Bennington College has a history, as you heard from President Walker at the very beginning, of creating students and graduates who don't just influence the world, they literally shift the paradigms that drive how our world functions. And that's because when you, get to, when you get to Bennington, you have the extraordinary experience of being in charge of your own education. We think you're smart enough to be able to come to campus and work with a team of extraordinary faculty who are faculty practitioners, meaning that they live and work every day practice what it is that they do, you get to come here and work under their guidance and mentorship. And so you're in for an adventure and I know you're up for it and I know you're excited about it. Some key elements of that adventure and you'll hear a little bit from that of, of this, both from Barbara and from Noel this evening, are uh, elements like uh, First Year Forum, which is your introduction to the academic life at Bennington College, as well as introduction and orientation to some really other important pieces of the campus culture. In addition to that, apart from getting an advisor in your first year, we'll help guide you through the initial process. You'll also be prepared for two really key components of your educational experience here. The plan, which will guide how you explore great important, amazing questions that you will work on with your faculty advisors, and fieldwork term, which is the ways in which you will have an experiential, rich experiential um, process that's linked to what you're doing in the plan. And so by the time you, four years from now, and it'll go so quickly, you'd be amazed, by the time you leave here, you will be extraordinarily well prepared to take your place in the pantheon of amazing graduates of Bennington who have done extraordinary things in the world. So welcome, welcome to Bennington College. We are so looking forward to seeing you next week as President Walker described such a beautiful day here in Vermont. And with that, I wanna turn you over to Barbara who will tell you a little bit more about what to think about and expect for first year four. Thank you so much, Maurice. Uh, good afternoon to all. I'm so excited to be here with you. So you have heard both President Walker and Provost Hall right now telling you that you will be in charge of your education and that needs support, right? That needs a little bit of help. And that is why First Year Forum 
is, is here for you. So who teaches first year forum? Your advisor. Your advisor teaches first year forum together with a senior student who knows everything about long campus, life on campus, everything about academics and will be helping you. So um, first year forum will help you get adjusted to Bennington um, and your advisor will discuss with you your academics, what the liberal arts education at Bennington is, what to explore the unfamiliar in terms of academics means, how to choose your courses, how to design your course of studies, reflection on the processes and, and, and your choices um, is part of, of First Year Forum as well. So when do you know who your advisor is? Uh, on or around Friday the 26th, the 26th of August. And they will reach out to you to connect with you first virtually and then in person to talk about your schedules. If you need to change courses, if you uh, um, would like to talk about um, how to access resources, because this is another thing that First Year Forum does with you and for you, is it helps you access um, help and the resources you need. Uh, who do I contact uh, about housing? Who do I contact about my health? Uh, what do I do for my mental health? So uh, we will help you with all of this. We will help you create communities uh, in class and outside of the class. What does it mean to be a student in a classroom where everybody talks, you know, you know seminar-based classrooms, how do I do this? You know, so we're here for you. And I, I think I've, met, oh, the reading, the summer reading. I hope you're enjoying the summer reading. I'm going to, I'm going to put in the chat the link to Linda Berry's Making comics, I'm so excited about that. We have secured a great guest uh, who will join us in October, Nick Susanis. Nick Susanis is the author of Unflattened, and he will come to us virtually to speak about his relationship with Lena Berry's work. But we also have a round table during orientation with great Bennington faculty who will tell to you, talk to you about interdisciplinarity. So how do they connect their own field of study to Linda Berry's work. It's going to be very exciting and I can't wait. I can't wait for that. This said, I think I have said everything necessary for now because I will see you uh, during orientation for a big class about first year forums. And I will turn it back to Maurice. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you so much, Barbara. It is exciting. I taught first year forum last year. You are in for a treat. And with the addition of the novel this year, it's going to be a really rich experience. Now I want to turn to my colleague, Noel Murphy, Associate Dean of the College. Uh, Noel will tell you some more important pieces about um, what you will experience in your first year. Thank you. Thank you, Maurice. And I, I will add my voice to the, the series of very warm welcomes uh, to all of you incoming students. We, of course, can't wait to see you in just a few weeks. Um, as Maurice mentioned, a Bennington education really does put students at the center to, you know, to be in charge of their own education, to use his words. And, and I, every, every day uh, at the college, I, I'm struck by what an awesome responsibility and opportunity that really is for students. Um, and, you know, I think as you might have noted through the tone of all of our um, conversation today, um, even though students are at the center and they are in charge, they are not in this process on their own. And so I want to reinforce again, the systems of support that exist for, for all students, but in particular for first year students as they embark on this particular kind of education. So as Barbara mentioned, uh, the students, all incoming first year students are um, assigned to a first year forum classroom, which is taught by their first year advisor and a co-leader who is a senior student. So there's a, a kind of peer education support. Um, but in addition to that framework of support, students also have access to staff advisors at the college who can assist them as they navigate the college's academic processes. And we call this a dual advising model. All students, particularly first year students, but all students have access to their faculty advisor, as well as supports, additional supports through a staff advisor through the academic services office. Um, folks in, for, in academic services can provide 
any and a whole range of academic supports um, from from just general check ins. How's it going to supplement the work that you're doing in the first year forum with your faculty advisor to a really much more kind of substantial and ongoing um, even weekly support for students as you are adjusting to college life, uh, adjusting to the particular kind of coursework that you're being asked to do as a new student, um, reflecting and thinking about the work you're doing and, and what it means and how you are going about doing it. So things like uh, workflow management, time management, um, as well as any uh, particular questions about college processes, right? Where do I turn this thing in? When is this, this particular thing due? So there's a huge range of just general student supports that are available to you in the academic services office. And during orientation, you will have a chance to meet with my colleagues who focus specifically on working with first year and transfer students. Um, so we have an, a, a, three colleagues, uh, Kate Child, Rage Hezekiah, who I believe is, is here um, in, in the uh, participants today, um, and uh, our other colleague, Sabobo, um, uh, Langa Mandala, who focus specifically on first year students and international student supports. And if you are an upper level transfer student, my colleague, Stephanie Meyer, um, is available to you to talk with you about this particular experience of coming into Bennington and, and beginning your work um, in defining the work of your plan right away. This level of support also can extends to the folks in the fieldwork term office and um, who also are here to supplement the work you'll do with your faculty advisor in understanding that central tenet of a Bennington education. So in closing, just a, a reminder that, that um, you have faculty, staff, and peer supports at every stage of this process. And uh, for new students, it begins during orientation, which will take place uh, at the very end of this month. Um, I did want to just take a quick moment to note that uh, we've talked about September 1st as the start, of, start date of new student orientation. Um, that is the official start date for all new students. Uh, but since we have folks joining us today from all over the world, I'll just do a quick reminder in case you're in case there was any cause for concern that new student orientation begins a few days before that. So your arrival and the orientation dates that you've been uh, that have been communicated to you are accurate. Uh, no need for cause for concern there. Uh, and with that, I will look forward to answering questions from you later in this uh, presentation. And I'll turn it back over to Marie. Thank you so much, uh, Barbara and Noel. Um, hopefully what you took away from um, uh, what both of my colleagues said is lifting up what Noel said, you're here for an adventure. It is certainly you in charge of your education, but there is a lot of support um, as you navigate this process. And in closing, I also hope that when you get to campus, you will come see us. We are in the barn, that big red building on campus. You won't be able to miss it. You come in, you look for us, say hi. And maybe, maybe there may be some music playing that you can hear. I tend to do that from my office. I'm going to turn it over now to um, my extraordinary colleague, uh, Dr. Alfredo Medina, who is our VP for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Uh, thank you, Provost Hall. You're always a hard act to follow. But thank you. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to Bennington College. Uh, my name is Alfredo Medina, uh, pronouns he, him, his, Ed, and I'm the Vice President of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and College Diversity Officer. First, let me just also echo what I've heard from uh, President Walker uh, and Provost Hall. It's just uh, to see where folks are coming from, to just truly see internationalization play itself out at Bennington warms my heart. And a special shout out to all of those from New York City. I'm New York die, uh, die hard. And so uh, you have a special place in my heart. Make sure that you connect with me when you arrive on campus. Uh, this past June, I celebrated uh, one year work anniversary. And just reflecting on that brief tenure, there's a consistent theme that was expressed by faculty, staff, and, and more importantly, students. And that is creating a sense of community and belonging at Bennington College. Um, 
as a black Latin first generation college graduate, um, I can relate and appreciate the importance of aligning cultural values with institutional values. Bennington is a place that affords you the opportunity to socially and personally evolve and strive to be your authentic self. Studies suggest that communities and spaces that are welcoming and safe correlate with high student satisfaction, retention, and persistence. Students who feel welcomed and safe are more likely to experience higher levels of academic performance, social engagement, and graduate in four years. Bennington is committed to fostering a sense of community and belonging that feels like a second home for all students, but especially our minoritized and international student body. You know, having spaces to meet, to hang out, pray, celebrate key holidays can really be the difference for students feeling seen, heard, and valued. As President Walker shared, the class of 2026 is the second largest entering class in our history. You're hailing from 38 states and 24 countries. As a community, we celebrate and delight in diversity. We strive to collectively advance anti-racism, social justice, inclusivity, and belongingness. All of you will share spaces with peers who are culturally, ethnically, and racially different from you. The same is true regarding your gender identity, sexuality, and religion, as well as disability. But if it's one thing I've learned from students this past year, and that is our collective and diverse identities, that you being black, brown, indigenous, non-binary, queer, trans, or neurodiverse, that is integral to the Bennington student experience and why so many choose to enroll here. Given the diversity at a small residential college in rural Southern Vermont, as you can imagine, there are going to be challenges. Like any other US college or university, Bennington is not immune from ignorance, racism, bigotry, sexual assault, homophobia, transphobia, Islamophobia, or ableism. And that's just to name some of the ones that just come off the top of my head. Moreover, navigating predominantly white spaces for BIPOC students can feel unsafe and jarring at times. What I have found this past year is that students who report these incidences, in many cases, these were implicit in nature. Part of it was just unconscious of students not knowing what they were saying and wanting to learn from those experiences. A lot of that had to do with limited lived experiences and their own racialized influences. Addressing these concerns through an anti-racist lens helped students better understand how their behavior was harmful to others while still holding them accountable. I personally believe that this is a better alternative than canceling out a person altogether. With the combination of anti-racist education, trust, honesty, transparency, empathy, and accountability, only then will real change occur in building a community that values all lived experiences despite our apparent differences. Now, if you should ever experience any of these isms, my office is here to help and guide you. I welcome you first to reach out to my office to just learn about our anti-racist and DEI practices and programs. If you should, for some reason, experience a microaggression, a bias or bigotry in the classroom, we have a very active uh, student engagement policy committee, or what we know, we refer to as SEPC, who work very closely with my office to address ways to mitigate those experiences from happening in the classroom, or even reaching out to my esteemed colleague, Xiomara Giordano, the Associate Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Xiomara spends the bulk of her time addressing student-related matters and enjoys having students visit the EAC office. There you will find a BIPOC pantry stocked with goods and products that would be very difficult to find in Bennington. We also have prayer mats available for practicing Muslims to pray. So I encourage you all to drop by any time to meet and spend time in a space that was created with you in mind. Lastly, I personally like to meet students one-on-one. -on -one. I wanna get to know you. I wanna learn about your experiences because I truly believe that what makes Bennington special is that we're all co-learning together. So I hold student office hours every Tuesday from two to three. If it doesn't align with your schedule, I'm always willing to take an appointment any other place and meet you where you feel the, where you can feel that you're mostly safe to talk about things that are um, impacting um, your academic and social journey at Bennington College. Um, also, my office works very closely with student life to host events, trips, invite speakers, and even workshops to help you adjust and transition to Bennington while finding your sense of belonging and purpose. So again, 
Welcome to Bennington, and thank you for choosing us as your second home. At this time, we're going to open it up for questions. So I'd like to call Shelton back on stage to field them. Thank you so much, Dr. Medina. Um, and thank you all for submitting. I'm seeing we're getting some great questions through already. Um, as my colleagues are coming back on virtual stage, I thought we might, let's begin with some of the housing and arrival related questions. Um, Li Chen, I see, I see you have answered a number of them, um, but could you or members of your team speak to the arrival time questions we've received and also how rooms are equipped? Thank you, Sheldon. And I will take the arrival question and ask my colleague Donnie to answer the question regarding furnishing in the room. Uh, so first of all, uh, uh, I want to acknowledge as we return to uh, normal operation, I want to acknowledge it's uh, travel is fairly unpredictable these days. Again, particularly for those of you who have to fly, whether it's across the country or across the world. Um, again, as a reminder, if you are coming from outside the United States, uh, you do have a little earlier arrival time. Uh, those dates are August 30th and August 31st. And the general large move-in is September 1. Uh, to alleviate a long line and traffic, we ask family whose family name begin from A, the letter A, all the way to the letter L, to try to arrive between 9 and 10.30. And for those of you whose family name letter starting with an M to Z, please arrive between 10.30 and 12. Uh, there's resource fair going on, as Donnie has outlined. Uh, there is also lunch. Again, if you cannot arrive until after 12 noon, you can still pick up the information. I encourage you to check the information on our welcome website. Uh, it's in the process of being updated with more detailed information. Also, I want to highlight, if you have any individual questions, you can always reach out to studentlife at bennington.edu. And with that, I um, want to pass the mic to my colleague, Donnie, in terms of room furnishing. Hello, so I am going to um, also put in the general chat a link to our webpage. It is, um, it'll say student life and the residential experience. And if you scroll down um, to near the bottom, it will have uh, an option of get to know the houses at Bennington. And it'll have um, categories that you can take a look at in terms of um, what the houses entail. So in regarding furnishings, you'll get a twin size bed, which will be a mattress, box spring and frame. You will need to bring your own bedding such as extra long sheets, pillows, blankets, and a mattress cover. Uh, it will be uh, furnished with a desk and chair, a bookcase, a dresser, a closet or a wardrobe. And you'll also have um, internet access, which will be wired and wireless. And then underneath, you'll also have items uh, that you can bring to campus and items that you should not be bringing to campus. So you can take a look at this um, on the website and it'll have all of that information regarding what's included in our houses. Thanks, Donnie. And I saw there was another related question relative to um, laundry facilities. Would you mind speaking to that for a moment as well? Sure. So. Um, our houses uh, should be equipped with laundry facilities, and I believe they're located in the basement or like the bottom level portion of each house. So it will come with a washer and dryer. Um, I am not familiar with um, the cost of the washer and dryer, but houses should all have um, laundry facilities on site for the uh, student use. Great. And what about, um, I'm seeing another question about a twin bed. Is it a normal twin bed size or twin extra long? So the beds are actually twin XL. So when you get sheets, you will need to get the extra long sheets and bedding for um, twin XL size beds. 
Terrific. And then Arden had asked also, um, can, can boxes be shipped um, in advance? Can they receive items in advance? So that is actually a very good question. And that's probably best answered through our buildings and grounds. And so we can um, reach out to um, our buildings and ground team and ask to see um, uh, if boxes can be provided. So also, just to go back to the laundry, uh, it is $2 for a wash cycle, $1.75 uh, for drying. And then just for those that are actually coming into Parent Creek, they do have uh, different pricings um, for each of those. So just be aware of that. And I see actually Bailey addressed the receiving mail question as well for Arden. So it, it, it sounds like you can receive mail in advance. Um, she's answered the question in the chat. Um, while we're on arrival, let's move to, I saw some parent questions. Um, if parents are permitted to help with move-in is, is question number one. And then a sort of second, second part to that question is, do parents and families need to be vaccinated if they're coming on campus? Thanks. Um, yeah, so um, parents will be able to help with move-in. I know the last few years um, with COVID, that's been restricted. Parents will be able to help. We do ask that our visitors to campus and um, as parents bring their students to campus, they are considered visitors. We do ask that our visitors to campus be vaccinated. Um, we're still looking at what other, I did see that there was a question regarding testing. Um, there we go. <laughs> um, we are still kind of uh, ironing out all of the final details um, if we will ask parents to test as well. Um, so we will get more detailed information out to um, students, but parents will definitely be able to help students move in. And Allie, are there any limits to the number of family members that can help students move in? No, there is not. And what about, I saw some questions from family members about if they'll be able to tour campus while they're here moving students in. They absolutely will. Is that formal or informal? Uh, I am not sure if they, if we have formal tours going on or not. Do we, Lee Chen? Yes, we do. Thank you, Allie. Yes, we are, are collaborating with the admissions office, offering two optional tours on September the 1st. Uh, you will see the exact timeline when you arrive on campus uh, regarding the detailed schedule. Also, I want to just add very briefly, uh, we're really hoping to uh, family will stay. We do have a family specific orientation sessions uh, that you will receive relevant information. And then there is an official time uh, for you to say goodbye to your students. And then the rest of the orientation are designed and targeted specifically for students to connect with each other, starting to make new relationship and get familiar with the new environment. So again, you know, the detailed arrival information, if you didn't catch that, are posted on the welcome website. So if you go to bennington.edu, just Google welcome, there should be all this relevant information on our website. And again, feel free to reach out to studentlive.bennington.edu. If we don't have the question, we will forward it to the, uh, my colleagues are looking at particularly my colleagues in academic services. So we will make sure your question get directed and you will get an answer. And just a reminder too, that page is actually pinned at the top of the chat feature in, the, in, in our session right now. So you can have a quick link there if you need it. So one follow-up question too, while we're staying on, on families and while they're on campus, um, will families be able to have lunch in the dining hall on move-in day? Anybody? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes I, yeah. Uh, it's again, the, the lunch is optional. So um, you are welcome. Family are welcome to join. Um, but, you know, if family have plans to want to take advantage of the many wonderful cuisine in Pennington or surrounding area, 
they're also welcome to take their student with them. The official start of the orientation program, the welcome session is at 2 p.m. on, on uh, September the 1st. So that's the first time that we hope uh, all the family as new student will be able to join us. So you pretty much come check in and you have plenty of time to settle. And also, you know, there will be plenty of opportunity. Uh, you don't have to feel that you have to bring everything in. A lot of the time is once the student gets settled and get a better idea of what they need, uh, there are plenty of places to buy either used or brand new item in the community. Um, I'm just gonna turn the mic over very briefly to my colleague, Kathy, who just talked very briefly about transportation that we provide. So we do have a shuttle program that's available to our students throughout the year. And the shuttle program specifically is a minivan um, that picks students up right here on campus. Uh, we have drivers that we hire in campus safety. And there is a route similar to like you may be familiar with a community bus route that you've used in the past. So there is a set route that will take students throughout the community to some of the places uh, that our students frequent mostly for shopping of groceries, items that they might need at a department kind of store like Walmart. And then we even go to places like some of the, the more popular local diners uh, that our students like to eat at as well as Goodwill. So that is something that runs throughout the week. The schedule will be available when you arrive so you can pick that up and understand how to catch the shuttle and go into town. Thank you. And um, one follow up question on the tours. Are tours available on August 29th or 30th or both? I believe tours are also available for those of you who are eligible to arrive on, September, on August 30th and the 31st. Great. And I see a, a, a specific follow up question relative to the shuttles. Um, Kathy, if you'd like to speak to that, it's they're, they're asking how late can they stay in town for the shuttle service? What are the hours or schedule? We could also point them to a link um, if we have that available. So we're currently setting the shuttle schedule, but most of the time the shuttle usually ends before 11 p.m. during the week. Um, and honestly, that's because most of the establishment, establishments in Bennington close at that time. So there really wouldn't be any place for you to, to go shopping or to visit. But if you need a different, I see a question there, a, if you need a different ride, we also do keep a list of current taxi cab drivers. We really don't have Uber or Lyft in our community yet, um, but we do keep a current list of taxi cab drivers and the Green Mountain Express, which is the community bus system, the city bus system, does make stops on campus and we have that schedule available as well. So backing up to some follow-up questions um, with, with visiting families and parents who are unvaccinated relative to the vaccination policy. Ali, there's some questions relative to whether or not a negative COVID test can suffice if they're visiting family members who are unvaccinated and helping with move-in. Yes, that would, uh, that would suffice. And should they just bring that with them, photographic evidence of a negative test, or do they need to submit in advance? They don't need to submit it in advance if they want to just take a photo that has a timestamp on their phone. So if they're asked about it, they have it, that would be great. Terrific. Um, and so I want to switch gears a little bit back to some academic um, affairs related questions that came up earlier. Barbara, I'm wondering if you could speak to the common reading. There were some questions about should they complete the exercises and if they haven't received their copy, what to do? So no, no, no. They don't need to complete the exercise unless they want to. It's their book. They can do what they want, but they're not expected to have completed any exercises. They will complete some on campus together with the rest of their classmates. And if they haven't received the book, they may be international students who have or should have received the link to um, the books, the uh, electronic copies that we have uh, at Crosette, or uh, email me, balfano at bennington.edu. I put my email in the chat. I'll put it again in the Q&A. Um, and uh, let's see why. You may not have been on the list at the time. Something may, might have happened. So email me and we will make sure that you get access to a copy. And Noelle, Noelle. I, 
Thank you so much, Barbara. And Noelle, I saw one of our students um, inquired about the distance, the physical distance across campus between classes. I'm wondering if you could speak to that and how students solve for that. Yes, thanks, Shelton. Most students um, have have no trouble uh, navigating campus in the, the time frame allowed during classes. Um, uh, particularly, I know you, you said that you're concerned about the winter weather. Uh, our buildings and ground staff does a great job of maintaining the campus during you know, bad weather. And so uh, most of the time, it's, it's not a concern. Um, that said, every individual student's experience is different. And if you have particular concerns about mobility or about navigating the campus, um, please let me know and I can connect you with um, resources that might be able to help, um, particularly if there are mobility concerns that might fall under our ADA accommodations process, we can work with you to, um, to develop appropriate responses and strategies to help. Um, and that might be adjusting schedule or working with a registrar's office to adjust the classroom locations. Thank you, Noel. And I saw Bettina, an international student, has um, inquired about international students and need to fill out payroll forms in advance. Um, they're asking how can they get assistance regarding this. I know uh, it's probably on the minds of many international students. I'm wondering who from perhaps someone from Student Affairs could you assist? Yeah, sure. I'm happy to take that questions. Um, so the part of the uh, international student orientation, I think, again, if you've never been to the U.S. before, coming here can be overwhelming. And there's a lot of uh, U.S. government regulations that you are required to comply. So that's one of the main goal for international student orientation. Uh, in addition to filling out payroll related paperwork, there's also applying for social security numbers and there's also you know make sure your CVS record is up to date all of those will be handled during international student orientation and uh, for those of you who if for you know traveling reason could not make it to those there will be time uh, during new student orientation as well as throughout this first couple of weeks of the summer couple of weeks of the term uh, that there are staff member here available to assist you and help to get settled. Uh, so yes, we will. The short question is, yes, we are going to help you with those. Great, thank you so much. Um, and coming back to some residential life questions, um, Marim had asked a question relative to if you're uncomfortable with your assigned roommate, what, what choices do you have? What can you do? So yeah, and this was also answered um, by Bailey, so I'll be speaking a bit verbatim with that. Um, so we do have a waiting period of two weeks uh, for moving rooms, but the process is generally very easy to do so. If it is a safety concern or if it's extenuating circumstances, we have our Assistant Director of Housing Operations, uh, Christine Congelosi lula um, You can reach out to her or to me and... Um, we can uh, have a conversation with the students and explore options and see what we can do. And I would say each house has two house chairs uh, for the most part. And so um, if there are issues about, you know, living and uh, uh, coexisting with your roommate or suite mates, uh, really just speak with them. They are going to be very helpful in providing that uh, space to discuss your concerns and provide um, options for mediation to help manage any roommate conflict and um, engage in meaningful dialogue. So, and this is if the concern is not about safety, but more so about living standards, such as, you know, hey, uh, one person might put their clothes on the floor, some person might put them in a laundry hamper and just, you know, looking about the living conditions of the space. Great, thank you, Donnie. And staying with you for just one moment longer, a uh, question about AC. Do the residence halls or houses have AC? And that is a very good question. Um, 
I think in some spaces, or at least I know in, um, oh, okay, think... actually, Bailey did answer that, um, and she did answer in the chat, but unfortunately, no, they don't come with AC. And so I want to say that air conditioning, um, ACs, well, it doesn't say that it's in a... I'll impart to it. As one who's recently relocated from Philadelphia to Vermont, in most instances, September through May, um, AC won't be necessary. Um, during the summer, sometimes there are a few warm days, but um, it's it's not as much of an issue here as it may be in other climates that, that you may be hailing from. Um, and then I'm seeing questions about dietary restrictions. Is there a form to fill out for dietary restrictions or are there a special meal plan for those with allergies? Could someone from Student Affairs uh, share a little bit of insight about our food program at Bennington College? Uh, yes, I'll go ahead and take that. Um, I uh, have worked at seven higher education institutions in the United States. Uh, my personal, <laughs> I honestly believe our dining service is amazing. And it's, um, we do have students for medical reasons as well as for cultural reason or religious reason have dietary restriction. And every single meal, there are plenty of options for students uh, just to, you know, we have vegetarians, gluten-free, um, and halal meat. Uh, so those, you know, options are available. And like I say, you actually don't need to fill out a separate request form uh, because of the variety of options we have provided at each meal. I believe you will find something that you are able to eat. And something I'm also quite proud of is uh, our dining service. Again, if, if you have any suggestions, you know, I, I know during the Thanksgiving time, uh, a lot of our students who were not able to return home, uh, actually the chef worked with individual students to cook uh, meals that, that they are familiar with, so represent their heritage. So um, we're definitely interested, again, al aligned with our education mission. Uh, if you have any suggestion or thought, uh, feel free to let us know and help make your experience better. Uh, but you do not have to fill out a separate request form for that. Great, thanks Lee Chen. I'm watching time, but I think we have uh, a few, a minute left to field a few more questions. Noelle, I was hopeful, could you speak a little bit to study away options on campus? And I also saw we had a, a, another question in relation to um, students who may be interested in, in going on to, to become educators. Yes, happily. I, uh, I love to talk about study away opportunities. I just uh, put a link in the, the Q&A um, question here, uh, but our, uh, there is a staff member in academic services, Stephanie Meyer, who works specifically with students who are interested in studying away. Um, at Bennington, we want to ensure that your study away opportunity is um, directly linked with your plan of study and is going to help you advance the work of your plan. And so we um, students can work with Stephanie both to understand the variety of options that are available to them uh, in terms of selecting a study abroad experience or study away experience that is going to link closely um, to their academic goals and inquiries. Uh, but also then to understand the processes that the student would need to engage in in order to be approved to study away, um, which is always going to require the approval of a plan committee. So that means that uh, students are eligible to study away once they have an approved plan, which means that that would be their first, the first opportunity would be in their fourth term, and then at any point from that point moving forward. Um, there is a uh, first year forum workshop opportunities for first year students to learn more about this, these um, options and um, processes. And you can always follow the link um, to the Study Away webpage and connect directly with Stephanie to learn some more. Thanks, Noelle. And one follow up, um, a student's just written in, Grace, 
inquiring if there are courses or areas of interest that um, are not courses that are not currently being offered by Bennington College. Are there any affiliate programs or options available to them? So there, there are a couple of options. The first um, is our, um, our cross enrollment program with Williams College and with the Community College of Vermont. So those programs allow students to study at Bennington, taking the majority of their coursework offered in the Bennington curriculum, but then to supplement that with a course at another regional uh, college. Um, uh, there are also, I should also take this opportunity to highlight the tutorial process at Bennington, which is um, somewhat similar to an independent study. But if there's an area um, that a student wants to dive in more deeply uh, than a course would allow or something that's not currently presented in the curriculum, students can work directly with a faculty member to propose an independent study, which is then credited and added to their, their schedule for any given term. Terrific. Um, and staying with academic affairs questions, um, we've got one question relative to first years and fieldwork term experience. Um, Noelle or Barbara or Maurice, could someone speak to fieldwork term experience in the first year? Yes, yes. You, uh, your students receive a lot of support um, on how to choose their first field work term. So they will take three workshops, all of the students will take three workshops with the Career Development and Field Work Term Office to learn how to access Handshake, where they find their first job, how to write their resume, how to write their letter, how to think about choosing their first job that somehow will relate to their to their studies, maybe not just the first one, maybe the second one. So they will be directed, they will know what the deadlines are, they will know how to move forward. Um, they will have classes in first year form as well about field work term. So it's a, it's a process that needs a little bit of learning at a time. It may feel overwhelming if I tell you everything right now, but know that you will know all that you have to know and you shouldn't worry about it right now. It's coming in October. And I'll just add to that, you will be uh, in your in your regular meetings, which you will have with your first year forum advisor, you'll be able to explore with them um, the spe specifics related to you of what um, a good field work term experience can look like. So that's an additional resource that you will have. Terrific. Thank you both. And I see we are at time. Um, and just to relay, I saw one one other question that we didn't didn't address here, but was answered in the chat relative to campus jobs. Um, I saw Bailey linked an email address for those students who are interested in on campus work um, to outreach to. If you have federal work study, you should have already been contacted, but you can um, email our campus jobs email address as well to find out more information there. But we want to thank you all for joining us today and really encourage you to make the most of your last few weeks remaining of summer. And we are so excited to see you when you arrive here on campus and please travel safely, whether it's near or far and we'll be in touch and please outreach to us if you do have any further questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm.